Making a call is actually now just fifth on the list of things we use our smartphones for, behind browsing, social media, music and gaming, which goes to show just how indispensable these all-in-one handheld computers have become. I was armed with three of the most powerful smartphones on the market right now. The iPhone 5S, the Nokia Lumia 1020 and the LG G2. And to test the phones, I'm enlisting the help of a London cab driver. Hopefully, some of the customers. Taxi! My special gadget show cab would be picking up a random selection of passengers throughout the day. The plan is to get the taxi's passengers to hand over their phones for the duration of their journeys and rely on mine. Worry, I gov. And soon we had four willing punters to give them a try. Andy? Oh, well, I wasn't expecting to see you in here. <laughs> Matt? I get to pray you of your oh, phone, of course. You might. Absolutely. Well, and finally, dynamic duo Lynn and Murray. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Gosh, very good to see you. As they journeyed across the city, they'd each be road testing one phone's design, usability and camera functions. And while they were doing that, cab driver Terry would be putting each phone's sat-nav against his own encyclopedic knowledge of London streets. Oh, where's it taking me now? He thinks he's got a mind of his own. So, while Terry took on the traffic, my passengers began to tackle their respective phones. Andy had his paws on Apple's latest iPhone, the iPhone 5S. It's the first smartphone with a 64-bit processor and comes with a fingerprint identity sensor and a larger capacity battery. You don't need on this one to pop in the passcode because you can use your fingerprint, but you've got to register it first. OK, um, what, with the police? With the... <laughs> <laughs> no, <don't be> <laughs> the 5S has retained the same design and 4-inch screen of its predecessor, the iPhone 5. It's a nice phone, the overall sort of uh, cosmetics. Yeah, you know, it's nice. But how would Matt's phone match up? He had the Nokia Lumia 1020 with a headline-grabbing 41-megapixel camera, a 4.5-inch screen and the latest Windows Amber operating system. I do like the look of it, you know, the colour is great. It's certainly a very colourful screen. This is about as big as I'd want to go for a smartphone. For their journey, Lynn and Murray were getting to grips with the LG G2. This runs Android Jelly Bean 4.3 and has a 5.2-inch Full HD screen, the largest of our three phones. In terms of styling, I mean, do you find that acceptable or is it just a bit...? No, that's fine. That is really yeah. nice. It's mm. sleek. Is it not that? Whoa, that is light. The LG may be lightweight, but up front, Terry was more concerned by London's heavy traffic. Sit in traffic all day long. Meanwhile, our passengers were hoping for a bit more pace from their phones as we began to scrutinise their speed and usability. I don't know if the like that the speed's improved. Processor for me, I don't really notice. If I'm loading a game that I'm playing that draws its um, stuff from the internet, yeah. uh, it's slow because the internet more access is slow. the connection that holds you up rather yeah. than the processor. So things. really, I wouldn't really notice the difference in, in, in the processor. To take full advantage of that new 64-bit A7 processor, then, you'll need a fast internet connection. Matt's Nokia, meanwhile, has a dual-core 1.5 gigahertz processor, but was he won over by Windows? It is very different. You know, the home screen itself, the interface, is a bit confusing. Simplicity, I think, with a, with a smartphone mm. is what people want to just go, and, but then I guess it's what you're used to. But Lynn and Murray were quite taken with the innovative touches of the G2's Android interface. Well, the touchscreen's really nice, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Wee. It's quite easy to use as well. Yes. Obviously, you've got to get your head around with spreading out for the droplet, but that's <laughs> ten, that, you learn that in 10 seconds. So, in terms of usability, the LG had the edge so far. Oh, there we go. Oh. Apparently, we spend an average of three and a half minutes each day using our phone's cameras, so our final test for the passengers was an important one. I use a camera quite a lot for like oh, family snaps yeah. and uh, like the odd video of the kids being silly and well, things like that. Well, there's a few new features with this camera. Hey, it's got a slightly bigger sensor, slightly wider aperture, so it's a bit better performance. That's, that's, I'm quite impressed with that because the, the iPhones have tended to have like a bit of a rubbish uh, camera, right, right. Um, so that does look a, a lot better. You've got a very healthy rosy glow on your cheeks. I'm That's because I work out. <laughs> <laughs> How would the much publicised 41 megapixel camera on the Nokia match up? It's not the quickest of reactions. No, on, on on the phone. I mean, the image itself is, you know, fantastic. But for a phone which prides itself on its camera, there are some drawbacks with the Windows platform. I mean, one of the big problems with Windows Phone is you actually some of the apps are missing. For example, uh, there isn't currently an Instagram app for oh, really? Windows Phone. Well, that seems a bit of a, a bit of a waste with such a, a fantastic camera. 
So, not a wholehearted endorsement for the Nokia's camera. How about the LG? Oh, that is a good camera, yeah. Mm, it's got 13 megapixels. Wow, really sharp. It's not wobbly. It doesn't go out of focus. Good. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty clear. Quite impressed, actually. The, yeah. the, the, the piece quality is brilliant. It's can't get rid of the double chins, though, can it? <laughs> I can't see any. Where is it? <laughs> Another strong showing for the LG G2 as we all approach journey's end. Yeah, we're not far now. And a good time to check how driver Terry had been getting on with each phone's sat-nav function, starting with the iPhone. How's the sat-nav doing, Terry? It's quicker than other um, sat-navs I've seen in picking up once you've set in the location. So this is giving you the right route? No. Mark's out of ten, I'll give it six. And that's generous. Terry's mood improved slightly with the Nokia. The only one I actually liked was the Nokia, because the graphics are all in 3D, looks quite nice. Still wouldn't have one, though. But by the time he got to the LG, he was positively irate. I'll tell you what, these sat-navs, they're all the same, they're all <laughs> useless. Wouldn't use one in a million years. Terry's clearly not a fan of their navigational qualities, but how did our multifunctional phones shape up overall? Time to clock up the G ratings. And it's four Gs for the iPhone 5S. It's a slick performer with a groundbreaking processor and a great camera, but it is expensive and it feels a bit on the small side these days. And it's also four Gs for the Nokia Lumia 1020. The camera's detail and range of functions are impressive, but the operating system and limited range of apps do slightly let it down. And it's 5Gs for the LG G2. With its phenomenal screen, great battery life and competitive price, it's another brilliant Android smartphone and one of the very best you can buy at the moment.